Hello. So this is um, my uh, uh, regular Tuesday evening um, answering health questions slot. Um, I'm just looking around a bit because everything seems to have changed. I think they've um, have updated um, um, the way it all works. But there we go. Um, so I hope that um, some of you will be joining soon and uh, I look forward to receiving some of your questions. So I said that um, the, um, the subject which I talk about at the beginning of this uh, session is talking about uh, energy. Um, 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 how we can have a good amount of energy uh, in our bodies and for our life. Um, um, it's, life is much more fun when we have a good amount of energy. Um, it's not much fun when we're in low energy and um, a lot of people really struggle with their energy. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm just going to pause while um, I realized, uh, yes, just turning on um, your questions. Um, I'm sorry about this. This is because they've just updated everything. Um, um, okay, Kimberly, thank you for saying hi, because now I know that that's working, which is fantastic. Um, so yes, I want to I want to talk about energy because uh, uh, I see a lot of people who are having problems with energy. Uh, I've had energy problems myself. I've had burnout myself, um, and it's life is much more enjoyable and much more fun when we have a good amount of energy, and um, it's not much fun when our energy is low. So um, what I want to do is talk about um, how we can have more energy and how we can look after our energy from an oriental medicine point of view. Interesting that from a, from a scientific point of view, uh, the main place we get energy from is from our food. Um, um, kind of Western way of looking at things is more looking at things physically. Uh, so they look at the physical way we get food, which is from our food. Food contains a certain number of calories or joules. Um, and this is what gives the body energy. But it doesn't explain how uh, someone can be um, eating enough food to, to give them two or three or four thousand calories a day, and yet they still feel exhausted. So um, obviously this isn't the, this isn't the whole answer. Um, there may be more other more physical reasons, such as having anemia or having a, a low uh, a, a low thyroid gland activity, uh, being hypothyroid. So there may be there may be other physical reasons uh, for having low energy. And if one has consistently low energy, uh, it can be good to go and see a doctor, uh, have, get a check out, maybe have a blood test, and see whether there's something definite in that respect. But there still, there may not be anything wrong on a physical level, and yet one's uh, energy level is still low. So this is where oriental medicine, which is more functional, has a more functional approach, uh, can be very useful. Um, so I'm um, just going to say thank you, Dave and Kimberly, uh, that everything's working. I'm just getting used to a, a whole new uh, kind of setup here. Um, so. In Oriental medicine, there's uh, we have a number of uh, sources of energy. Um, so I'm going to run through these fairly quickly, because if we're if we want to look after our energy, we need to look after these different sources of energy. And uh, if we're struggling with low energy, then there may be one or more different areas um, that that we need to look at. So. Um, the most fundamental uh, in oriental medicine are our kidneys, which uh, we know are producing urine. But in oriental medicine, they see that all the organs have uh, additional functions, energetic um, and, uh, func and uh, other functions, emotional, mental, spiritual functions. 
So the kidneys and the adrenal glands are seen as being our deep store of energy in the body. And we're given a good uh, blast of life energy <coughs> at the beginning of our life uh, from our parents, from the egg and the sperm. And this carries us through our life. And um, at some point, uh, we'll gradually, uh, gradually run out. And if we don't die from an accident or an illness or some other cause, uh, eventually we're going to die just because uh, that that deep energy in the kidneys runs out. Uh, and then we die a natural death where um, the body's just run out of energy, the heart, the lungs, the, the, um, the kidneys, things just uh, stop working because there's not enough life energy in. Because we're not only working for mechanical and chemical reasons, we're also working because we have life energy flowing through the body, chi or prana. So we need to look after this deep store of energy in our kidneys. Um, um, so the first thing is we need to have some kind of feeling for um, conserving our energy or uh, understanding we have so much, uh, you know, we have a certain amount of energy which we can use every day. Um, and, but we can overuse this store of energy in the kidneys. Uh, when we're young, uh, often the kid, you know, generally the kidney energy is stronger, and so we feel a bit more gung ho. We feel we can we can um, take more risks. We can um, um, we can stay up at night. We can you know we can push things more. We can deal with more stress and so on, because we have a lot of kidney energy. Um, and so often we push things and. Um, we may then burn out or get chronic fatigue. I burnt myself out in my early 30s um, because I just thought I was invincible and I thought energy, my energy would go on forever. And I found out, no, actually my energy is limited. And uh, I think a lot of other people uh, discover this too. And this is because the kidney energy is limited. We can burn it out. Um, and then it can really take weeks, months, or even years to recover that energy. And this is what happens when people develop chronic fatigue, um, uh, or ME. Uh, uh, generally, their kidney energy has become uh, low. Um, and this, this might happen for a number of reasons. It might happen just by overusing our energy, by overworking, um, um, doing too much, uh, um, having a, being in a lot of being under a lot of stress and difficult situations. Because when we're in difficult, financially stressful, personal relationships stressful, uh, work stressful, etc., that takes more of our energy to deal with it. So long-term stress can really deplete the kidney energy. Um, cold. To, um, uh, uh, cold depletes the energy because if we're living in a cold in, cold house, cold environment, that takes more energy from the body. Um, also, certain foods take energy out of the body. Uh, others bring energy in, but certain foods take energy out. Uh, recreational drugs, uh, caffeine, uh, sugar, uh, alcohol, uh, these all bring our energy up and outwards. Um, they, and they can, we can experience them as being stimulating, um, um, so I was uh, in another class, uh, I had someone who's really struggling with low energy and um, she uh, drinks uh, coffees during the day because it's only when she drinks a coffee that she experiences really feeling fully alive and her mind really being able to work. The trouble is though that that coffee is, is continuously uh, draining her kidney energy further. So it's keeping her locked into that, um, that kind of low, chronic, chronically low energy. Um, so um, uh, sex, drugs, rock and roll in moderation, great. Too much for too long um, um, uh, really uses up our kidney energy. And then we're likely to get a crash uh, in our physical energy. And when our kidney energy crashes, um, uh, we may also have what's called a nervous breakdown. We become very nervous, anxious, fearful. Um, and we may also feel emotionally uh, depressed. Um, um, 
So we need to look after our kidney energy. So how do we look after our kidney energy? We do things that bring energy into the body. So when we sleep, energy comes into the body. So we need a good amount of sleep. If we're really depleted, seven, eight, even nine hours a night. If we can't sleep at night, if we're having sleep problems, then having a siesta during the day. Um, we want to try and cut down on work and um, things where we're putting energy out so that more energy stays inside our body. Spending some time, regularly spending time on our own, meditating, fishing, gardening, just doing quiet things on our own is good because then energy is coming into the body. Um, as far as sleep goes, sleeping at night is much more beneficial than sleeping uh, during the day uh, if, if, you know, having, you know, if you're working at night. Because at night, in nature, energy is coming inwards. So much easier to replenish our kidneys at that time. And then certain foods uh, bring energy into our kidneys, particularly foods um, if we look at plants, plant foods first, plant foods that are storing energy. So just think about which foods store energy in the body. Um, so seeds are storing energy. Uh, uh, a lot of plants produce seeds uh, which fall to the ground. They stay in the ground until it's time to grow again. So. Um, as human beings, we eat a lot of seeds. We eat grains, which are the seeds of the grass family. We eat beans, which um, are the seeds of the leg legume legumes. And we eat seeds, which are the seeds of sunflower, sesame, etc. plants. Um, so these all contain a, a, a lot of key. So if we make these the center of our diet, it's really going to help recharge our kidneys. Also, root vegetables. What's the function of a root vegetable? It's to store energy and nutrients. So if we eat carrots and parsnips and swedes and onions and these storage organs, then that's going to bring more energy into the body. And of course, we need some light, fresh food as well, um, um, particularly green vegetables and lighter foods, which help bring our energy out, which help our energy to circulate and help us to express ourselves creatively and emotionally as well. Um, but, not, but not too much, not too much sugar, coffee, etc., which will then de eventually will deplete our kidney energy. So you may feel some days, some days you have a lot of energy, other days you don't have so much. Um, so to some extent you need to go with that. Um, but think about what you've been doing um, um, to deplete your energy, which has led to those low energy days, and then think about using the sleep, certain foods, um, um, more time on your own, cutting down on commitments, etc., to bring your kidney energy back up again. Um, depending on how depleted it is, this may take a few days or a few weeks, or if one's really depleted, it may take it may take months. It may, it's like a, a long term job. Then. Some other ways um, in oriental medicine of um, bringing energy into the body. Um, what they call the, the spleen and pancreas function. Um, um, they function at, at bringing food into the body and converting that food into body energy and nutrients that the body can use. So our digestion is, is really important. If we have a good digestive system and strong spleen pancreas energy, then our food gets converted into lots of body energy and that makes us feel more energetic. However, if we've really depleted our, uh, our, these organs and uh, digestion, and our digestion is poor, then we're not going to get so much energy from our food. This is why some people can eat relatively small amounts of food and have a lot of energy. Other people can eat a lot of food and don't, and don't have much energy. Uh, because their spleen pancreas is not doing a good job of digesting the food and getting the energy out into all the body cells. Um, so how do we look after spleen pancreas? Um, uh, warm foods, um, um, particularly soft foods, soups and stews, um, um, 
um, naturally sweet foods, uh, especially from root vegetables like onions, carrots, sweet potatoes, etc. And not having a lot of refined sugar, uh, which really weakens uh, st uh, the uh, spleen pancreas. Um, it feels sugary, excessively sweet foods. They feel nourishing. They feel like they're giving us energy. They do give us a quick burst of energy, but long term, they, they really deplete our spleen pancreas energy. So if you want to rebuild your energy, then you've got to avoid eating sugar and eat more naturally sweet root vegetables um, um, and making desserts, just using the natural sweetness in, in, in fruits um, um, to, to uh, create nice desserts. So that's the spleen, um, spleen pancreas. Also, the lungs uh, bring energy in. In oriental medicine, uh, lungs are bringing energy from the air. The air is much more diffuse. Um, it doesn't feel obvious that it has chi or prana in, but it does. This is why if you sit and breathe deeply for a few minutes, you, you, you feel more energy in your body. It's kind of weird. You just breathe deeply. And okay, you could say you have more oxygen in your body, um, but it also feels like you have more chi in your body. Um, so. Breathing deeply, and this is why going for a walk, doing some, some exercise can be energizing because we breathe more deeply and we're breath bringing more key into the body. So we also need to look after our lungs. So our lungs are good at bringing this key in. Um, exercise is, really helps the lungs. Uh, and again, eating more uh, whole foods, uh, whole grains, root vegetables, uh, a lot of the same foods that help the kidneys also help the lungs. Uh, whole grains, root vegetables, whole beans, um, soups, um, uh, minerals from seaweeds and salt and salt, mild use of salty seasonings, etc. All strengthen the lungs. Um, whereas um, sugar, caffeine, also excess, excess uh, fruit juices and especially tropical fruits uh, weaken the lungs. Uh, the lungs don't mind a little, a bit of fruit, but if you're living in Northern Europe, better to use the Northern European fruits, apples, pears, strawberries, blueberries, etc., rather than oranges, pineapples, mangoes, etc. Um, so these are, this is like a very brief uh, resume of how to strengthen our kidneys our spleen pancreas and our lungs obviously we could go into a much much more depth um, so but these are the areas of our health that we need to look after if we want to maintain uh, good energy levels um, and if we're suffering from low energy these are the areas that we can that we can look at um, if if you're suffering really you know de you know uh, badly from low energy uh, i do give online uh, health consultations if that would be a useful thing uh, um, for you to have, have more detailed advice okay so i hope that is useful um as i say we could go into uh we could do hours on this subject going into a lot of depth but i hope that gives you a, a quick resume so now I'm going to check out your questions. So, um, hi, Kimberly, Dave, Amal, uh, Pema, um, good to have you all here. Um, so, Jennifer, you're asking about foods. Can foods uh, help the kidney energy? So I described some of that. Um, I realize now I missed a, I missed a bit out. So among plant foods, eating the seeds, the root vegetables, the storage uh, parts of plants. Um, also, minerals um, contain almost the most key. Uh, minerals uh, like sea salt and uh, mineral rich foods like eating greens um, and also sea vegetables are very high in minerals. And mildly salty seasonings like herb salt, miso, shoyu, tamari, etc. So using moderate amount of minerals in our cooking and eating high mineral foods is very strengthening for the kidneys. A particularly good way of uh, having minerals is in a broth soup. 
because if we just eat salt, then we get thirsty, um, and then we may drink uh, may drink water, but we may drink fruit juices or alcohol or other things to quench that thirst, which isn't helpful. So if we have those minerals in a, in a soup, like a miso soup or a um, or a vegetable soup or a bean soup, um, then that um, uh, soups uh, more broth soups uh, are very strengthening for kidneys. Also, a little animal food, uh, because animals contain a lot more key than plant foods. If we eat too many animals, too much meat, eggs, cheese, chicken, etc., then our energy, we, we can build up a lot of heat and tension in the body, and then our key stops moving, and you know, various um, undesirable things happen, which, which can squash our energy, because our key stops moving. Uh, but eating small amounts can be useful if the kidney energy becomes very low. Um, in macrobiotics, we tend to go more towards fish or shellfish uh, because uh, these uh, contain less, uh, less saturated fats, easy to digest. So having some fish uh, and also fish soup um, or uh, um, uh, like a fish chowder or shellfish chowder uh, is very strengthening for the kidneys. Um, so I hope that gives you a fuller picture, uh, Jennifer. Um, and then um, Pema, you're asking about low thyroid, and you're saying you don't want to take thyroxin. Um, so maybe I'll maybe I'll talk about that for a f for a few minutes because that's a, a common a common problem. Our, th our thyroid gland which is either side of our neck in here, is producing the hormone thyroxin. Uh, and this uh, speeds up our metabolism. So it speeds up the production of energy and, and heat in the body. Um, and some people get hyperthyroidism, uh, where too much thyroxin is getting produced. And they often feel hot and very um, uh, overly active. Um, and racy and um, and have a high metabolic rate and, and can end up losing weight uh, because of it uh, and having a, a racing heart uh, um, and heart palpitations and, and, and other symptoms. Other people can produce not enough thyroxine and then the metabolism goes low then people's body temperature uh, drops a little bit and people feel slow and lethargic and can't think um, so clearly, you know, etc. So, the question is, um, you know, what makes, what, you know, what changes the um, amount of thyroxin that the thyroid is producing? Um, so, in Oriental medicine, it's it's one connection is with the throat chakra, and. The throat chakra is about expressing ourselves through words and in other ways. Um, so the, the thyroid needs a good amount of qi chi coming up the body and coming through the thyroid to make it uh, normally active. When this energy becomes blocked, then the th thyroid can become underactive. Um, um, and this is when we're holding our energy down and especially the liver energy and sometimes the spleen energy is not working well. In oriental medicine, the, the liver energy is, is um, our, our kidneys, I was talking about earlier, store the energy, the liver distributes it around the body so we can move our muscles and our eyes and um, think and express our emotions, etc. Um, so especially when the liver energy has become blocked, uh, maybe by emotional suppression, Maybe we have a lot of frustration, a lot of unexpressed emotion we're holding in the body. Maybe by a lot of heavy, heavy foods. Um, in macrobiotics, we'd, we call them yang foods. A lot of meat, cheese, eggs, bread, very salty foods. Um, create a lot of tension in the liver, and, and so the liver energy builds up. And that can create tension, tension through the solar plexus. can create tension, headaches, a lot of tension in the neck and shoulders. And it can also create a lot of tension here, and that can that can cause the thyroxin level um, to drop. Also, maybe also when the heart energy is low, 
because the heart has a strong connection with our throat, then um, then the uh, 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 then thyroxine level may drop. If it drops, if it drops a lot. The symptoms can be quite strong, and it's probably a good idea to take thyroxine. Um, um, either the common um, medically given um, uh, levothyroxine, which is synthetically produced. Some people find they do better on um, um, uh, thyroxine, which is extracted from, uh, from pig's thyroid glands which has, uh, there are several different kinds of thyroxine um, um, and the, 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 pig, the, the uh, uh, extract from pigs' uh, thyroids have, have T3 as well as T4 and possibly other uh, forms of thyroxine and some people seem to have less symptoms on that. So if it's severe, one may need to take some kind of thyroxine. Um, in Western medicine, they consider that, that if you need thyroxine, if you've become a hypothyroid, um, then you need to take thyroxine, and that's probably going to be for the rest of your life. However, what I see is that if people really take big steps to change their health through their diet, maybe emotional work, maybe more activity, you know, etc., that some people who who can can move from being hypothyroid to uh, having normal levels again, so you know, that is possible. It tends to take a bit of time. This is quite a deep problem in the body. Um, so if it's marginal, it's you know if it, if it's a little bit low, it's it's really up to everybody's choice as to whether they want to go down the thyroxine route to relieve the symptoms or whether they want to try a more natural approach. Um, or you could do both. You could take some thyroxine and use a natural approach to healing your thyroid. Um, and at, uh, at some point you may be able to um, reduce your dose or, or come off it. Um, but in my experience, it's a deep problem in the body. It's, it's, a, you know, it's an endocrine gland, a, a hormone producing gland and imbalances in, in the endocrine glands quite deep in the body so they tend to have taken longer to to um, be created and to, and to build up um, so that's a little little bit about um, about uh, the thyroid so I hope that's useful to Pema and uh, Trudy uh, nice to have you here uh, so your son has had a virus to the brain chickenpox shingles related that went through the spine instead of outwards to the body it went internally to the brain he's extremely weak and normally very strong active healthy uh, living young man um, so I'm just going to stress as a diagnosis I worry for him and his young family um, rest and nourishment please can you comment and add advice um, 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 so I'll say a few things without seeing, seeing him I really have to talk in general terms but because the nervous system is, um, um, is nourished by the kidney energy it suggests that, that, some, that his kidney energy may be low and if he's now uh, very weak, then the advice I was given before to strengthen the kidneys um, uh, is what's going to be most useful. I wonder if he was taking what in macrobiotics we would call some strong yin um, substances over a long period of time, either eating quite a bit of sugar um, or alcohol or recreational drugs, maybe when he was more of a teenager or a young adult, um, um, or something like that because what I've seen is that, again, it's a deep problem. The brain and the nervous system are deep inside the body, and it takes a lot to weaken those deep structures in the body. And generally, people have had a lot of those strong yin uh, foods or substances um, um, in order to develop a, a, a deep uh, weakness uh, in the nervous system. Um, so... Um, 
you know, it may be more recently, or it may be in a certain period um, in his past as a teenager or a young adult, if he consumed a lot of uh, recreational drugs, a lot of sugar, a lot of kind of quick fast foods, uh, lacking minerals and fiber, um, uh, alcohol, a lot of tea and coffee, etc. Um, those things can, can deeply weaken the, the nervous system. So that's kind of my initial take. Um, again, if you you know if I can be of help, then you know please get in touch and uh, you know we can talk in more depth. Um, so uh, Joan, you're asking why did the Cushies and some of some of the teachers uh, die of cancer? Yep. So that's a good question. Um, um, probably if you ask different different people you may get slightly different answers but I'll give you my take on it um, um, think about think about Michio Kushi um, um, and also his wife Avalon um, who both um, died of cancer and Michio at the age of 88 um, they it seems it seems very contradictory because they started a whole movement which really helped a lot of people recover their health, including a lot of people who had cancer recovered their health uh, through their guidance. I think the the downfall for them was that they overworked to an absolute incredible extent. Um, I've talked to people who worked with Micho and who lived in lived in his and Avalon's house and they literally they never took a day off they were so committed to trying to help other people and spread macrobiotics and the message that there's a lot that we can do to help help our lives and our health and they by any measure they drastically overworked and they didn't look after their health um, from that point of view as as well as they could maybe not as well as they were telling other people um, um, to look after their health. But that was their choice, that they were very driven to be in service and to help people in the world. Um, I think if it hadn't been for that, if they'd worked a 40, 50 hour week, even a 60 hour week, and had much better balance in their life, then I think it's unlikely they would have developed cancer, but they didn't. They worked a, 80 hour week and they often spent weeks at a time traveling uh, and teaching uh, and uh, uh, a lot of stress uh, in their lives and so I think that really got to them uh, so that may seem contradictory that they you know that they would uh, die of cancer when they're helping so many other people uh, become healthier um, but I think that is, that is for me that is the main reason um, and you said um, you know it's a few of the, few other macrobiotic teachers also died from cancer. Um, I would say a few other things. I think we're never going to be f completely free of illness. There's so much we can do to improve our health and avoid particularly degenerative illnesses. But our knowledge of health and life and uh, what happens is never going to be perfect. So there will always be illness, including cancer. For me, I think a couple of reflections I've had uh, on, on macrobiotics. Uh, one is macrobiotics put a lot of stress on food, didn't put a lot of stress on exercise, which, which I think is very important for health. Um, so often I think people within macrobiotics haven't exercised uh, very much. Also to start off with, um, macrobiotics didn't put much emphasis on, um, on emotional health. It was kind of felt that if we just eat the right food, it'll sort out all of our emotions. And certainly eating a healthy, balanced diet can really help stabilize us emotionally and create a better emotional balance. But we have an emotional life. Our emotions are a big part of us. And if we are emotionally blocked and we're hanging on to strong angers, resentments, fears, grief, sadness, etc., over time, that also has a big impact on the body. And personally, I now work with emotional healing uh, at the same time as dietary, uh, a, a lifestyle, and you know, other, other forms of healing. So I think 
for every for every teaching for every teacher you know um, every every person we have the things which we're good at and then we have the things which we're a little blind about um, and I think from macrobiotics that uh, it's been a little weak around the exercise and the emotional awareness and emotional healing side so I hope that uh, kind of answers your question, Joe. Um, Amal, um, thoughts about eating canned sardines, organic apple uh, vinegar, and frozen vegetables. Okay, some very practical questions. Um, I think if one eats fish, I think eating a little canned fish sometimes um, is um, is fine. Um, I think you know just looking at some information recently that the canned foods the in the inside of the the can has a plastic coating generally apparently I want to find out more about this which contains certain chemicals which can leach into the food and which may have harmful effects on the health so uh, I think eating a lot of canned food um, and may well not be a good idea but I think eating something from a can occasionally um, um, is uh, probably okay. Um, apple vinegar or apple cider vinegar I think is fine to use. It's quite sharp, it's quite strong, um, so you might not want to use quite as much of it as some other vinegars. Frozen vegetables, um, uh, a bit like the tin fish question, I think it depends how often. Um, I think if I think freezing food uh, on a nutrient level it does break down the vitamin C and on a on a chi or life energy level you, you do lose some of the chi in the food so I would say don't eat um, all or most of your vegetables frozen but if occasionally you want to eat a frozen food uh, frozen peas peas are nice all year round so I eat frozen peas sometimes. Um, sometimes if I, when I grow a lot of green beans, I might freeze them for a while so that I can use them in other seasons. So I think a little bit of frozen is okay. Um, uh, Bianca, uh, you're using antifungal soaps, um, um, wash, shampoo, makeup, etc. Are there or is there an antifungal food or diet? Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's an interesting question. So, presumably, you're—I don't know whether you or you're just interested in when people get fungal infections. Um, and it sounds like rather than using kind of some kind of chemicalized uh, uh, soaps or shampoos, you're wondering whether you can heal them more naturally. Um, so, some common fungal diseases are uh, athlete's foot where the skin often between the toes becomes uh, kind of soft and starts flaking off and uh, raw because uh, fungus is uh, living in the, in, the, in, the, in the skin. Also ringworm, um, where we, we've got little rings on the body, uh, a bit like a fairy ring out on the soil where the, uh, the fungus starts off in one place and then it gradually grows outwards so you, you get a ring forming. Um, is uh, also caused by a fungus. Um, to put it simply, if, if you think about where uh, where fungi like to grow in nature, it's damp places. They grow in damp ground. They can't grow in dry ground. So we tend, we're more likely to develop fungal illnesses when um, uh, on our skin when our body condition is too damp from eating a lot of damp forming foods. Um, not necessarily drinking excess water because that's quite easy for the body to get rid of but especially drinking um, uh, caffeinated drinks, a lot of coffee, black tea, fruit juices, uh, alcohol um, um, I think would be the main things uh, these um, in macrobiotics what we call more, more yin um, more yin liquids uh, create dampness in the body um, and then uh, the body becomes a little bit more soggy and then the fungi can get in and grow on the body. Um, I always remember uh, one of these um, uh, 
programs um, on telly. Some, oh, what was it called? What was it called? Not uh, not disgusting bodies. Something bodies. Sorry, I'm just going to turn that off. Um, and they had people coming on with different health problems. And there was this one young guy who just sweated so much that he had to change his T-shirt um, or change his clothes uh, several times a day. And so they were trying to work out how to help him. And in the end, they recommended this machine which goes over the skin and basically kind of kills or, or destroys the sweat glands. Um, the amazing thing is they didn't ask him what he was drinking, um, which would seem like the, you know, the kind of most obvious thing to ask. I could see from looking at his face from oriental diagnosis that he was drinking a lot of sweetened drinks, whether, I didn't, whether it was Coca-Cola Coca or something like that, I don't know. And when we drink a lot of those a lot of those foods, a lot of those kind of drinks, uh, sweetened drinks, you know, also alcohol, caffeine, you know, etc., which some people really drink a lot of, um, it produces this damp condition in the body. So we want to dry out the body, stop drinking those, eat slightly more dry foods, you know, whole grains, vegetables, um, 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 you know, beans, etc., cooked in a, in a more dry way. Uh, as far as liquids, drinking water, maybe drinking some mild herbal teas, uh, maybe a grain coffee like barley cup, caro, yano, etc. Um, so that the surface of the body dries out. Um, and that can be really helpful in getting rid of athlete's foot and uh, also ringworm. So I um, hope that helps Bianca. Um, so Trudy, you've come back. Uh, strong young man, um, focused on healthy diet, exercise and fitness. You feel stress has had a big impact. The young family work demands. So as I was saying earlier, cert certainly stress can really deplete the kidney energy a lot. Um, uh, because dealing with stress, it just our kidneys are our energy reserve in the body. Um, and when we're under prolonged stress, then it just demands a lot of kidney energy, and then the kidneys can become depleted. So that that may well have been that may well have been a contributory factor. Um, great, he's focused on um, kind of health and fitness. Just need to kind of look at some other kind of possibilities. You know, one is some people who feel they're eating a healthy diet. Some people think that. Uh, drinking a lot of smoothies uh, is a healthy thing to do. A lot of uh, fruits and maca and um, you know, these kind of things uh, whizzed up. Um, uh, actually, they, they deplete the kidney energy and also the lung energy, as I was talking about earlier. So there's some foods which people think are healthy, which actually aren't. Or eating a lot of fruit and a lot of dried fruits, a lot of dates, which contain a lot of sugar. Um, so I'm wondering whether you know that might have contributed. Um, fitness, of course, is is great, um, um, but fitness is one aspect of health, but it doesn't necessarily create health in all the internal organs. People can be fit. I mean, it helps to be fit for sure. It helps blood circulation. It helps digestion. It helps us use up the food we've eaten. But people who are fit develop a whole wide range of different illnesses, and, you know, diabetes, arthritis, heart problems, you know, strokes, etc. So fitness on its own isn't a guarantee of, of internal health. And so I, I do wonder if something may have happened in the past, you know, whether he went through, you know, I don't know, but you know, I'm just wondering whether he went through um, a time in his kind of um, you know, older teenagehood or, or young 20s, um, where he got into more recreational drugs or drinking a lot of alcohol or, or, or kind of unhealthy things um, because I meet a lot of young people or a lot of sometimes middle-aged people that went through a stage like that which can have quite a lasting um, um, weakening or damaging effect on the body um, and maybe you know then the stress you know is another factor that then brought that out you know, quite often quite often you know, illnesses have you know, have multiple causes. You know, sometimes partly dietary, partly lifestyle, partly stress, um, uh, partly emotional, you know, uh, uh, you know etc. 
Um, okay, so I hope that gives you uh, a bit more to kind of work with, uh, Trudy. Um, uh, again, if you want to talk more about it sometime, then uh, I'm very happy to do that. So, um, I wonder if you have uh, any more questions. So, some good questions so far. So, if you have any more questions concerning health, physical, emotional health, um, for yourself or people around you, or uh, just things that you're uh, interested in, then, um, okay, so Kimberly, thank you. My sister's having bouts of vertigo and tinnitus, and she often vomits during these episodes. Um, so you, so you, um, so you kind of, um, were asking your questions. I found that her kidney, spleen, and liver seem low. She's a doctor working in the hospital that's been taken off night shift. Um, uh, because of this, and she's also inter she also is intermittent fasting. Have you any additional advice? Of course, it's always good to see people to, to be able to ascertain more clearly uh, what's happening. Um, but th the things, the directions I would be looking at are: she's vomiting, so there's tension in her stomach. And often that is coming, that comes from the liver. Um, when the liver holds a lot of tension, then the liver is, the liver is a large organ and the stomach is right underneath. And so if the liver holds a lot of tension, it can create a lot of tension in the stomach as well. So, so my first kind of question would be, does she hold a lot of tension? Um, does she, is she under a lot of stress? I imagine she may have been recently um, as a doctor working in hospital, um, um, but I wonder if there's quite you know more long-term stress. Uh, I don't know how long she's had this problem. Also, if she has the tendency to suppress her emotions, not talk about her emotions, uh, but bottle everything up, which can create a lot of tension in that part of the body. Um, then. Um, the vertigo and the tinnitus so both both to do with the with the inner ear with the balance well the tinnitus more with the hearing in the ear the vertigo more with the balance organ in the ear um, the two most likely things are one that a kidney energy may have become really low because the kidneys provide the basic energy for the ears um, which as we talked about earlier can happen if people are giving out too much, overworking, expending too much energy, under prolonged stress, using stimulants, tea, coffee, alcohol, sugar, etc. to keep going. You know, a very common pattern, I don't know if this is her pattern, but a very common pattern is overworking, pushing oneself too hard, and then needing those stimulants to keep going. And eventually, the, kid, you know, the, the overwork and the stimulants really deplete the kidney energy, and then people can have a health crash. Um, so that might be one thing, but also sometimes that blockage in the in the liver can have a big impact on the ears. Uh, when there's really a lot of tension, you know, I've seen a number of people, and I've experienced myself a few times, really having a lot of tension in my solar plexus, affecting my sense of balance um, and uh, affecting the ears. So. Those would be the two things uh, to look into. Um, so, concerning the the liver and the stomach, is she holding a lot of tension in her body? Is she is she a tense person? Is she does that show up on her face or in her body or in in her language? Um, um, does she do things to unwind? Does she express how she's feeling, uh, which would be helpful? And then also, does she show signs of her kidney energy being low, such as needing coffee in order to wake up in the morning, suffering from low energy, you know, symptoms of burnout, um, achy body, achy joints, feeling cold, feeling deeply, deeply cold in the body, um, um, having to pee a lot in the night, having sleep problems, um, uh, feeling very anxious, all these signs of, of low kidney energy. 
So those would be the two areas uh, to look at, I think. So you're saying it came on one and a half years ago, and there's some family stress too. Um, yep. So maybe there's if it's if it's long standing. Don't know if that's short term family stress or long term family stress. If we've been through you know, deep stress, deep stresses or or traumas you know, during our childhood, teenage times, then that can really have a lasting effect on the body, and until we until we get them out, till we heal them, so yeah, that could certainly be contributing. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So 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 that's good. Um, okay, so Nikki, not a question, just some feedback on your improvements. You've experienced a significant increase in energy. I'm in my 40s and feel almost like I did in my 20s again. Fantastic. I can run nearly every day and look forward to it. Um, balance my work home life better, although working from home at the moment. I put this purely down to a macrobiotic diet lifestyle, which I've been following more strictly since the beginning of the year. My 30s seemed a washout of being tired, lacking energy, and just feeling struggle through uh, some days. I feel amazing now. Thank you. That's really, really good to hear, Nikki. So, really, you know, also that's just such a good example of how oriental medicine can be put into practice in how to strengthen our kidney energy. It makes me so sad when I when I see clients or other people who have been struggling with low energy for years or sometimes for decades because they don't know how to to increase their energy. And it really, you know, long-term tiredness really has a big impact on our, on our, on our happiness and quality of life. So, thank you, Nikki. That's a really good example. So, you've been following uh, a more balanced, macrobiotic diet uh, and lifestyle. Um, you said from the beginning of the year, so that's kind of five months, and it sounds like that's that's had a big effect in five months, which is fantastic. Um, thank you. Um, Alex, okay, nice to have you here again. Uh, you've got the self-healing cookbook. Um, 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 and you're asking a few eyebrow-raising inferences. Um, you maybe have to just uh, give a bit of allowance because I think that book was probably first written in the 1970s or 80s. It was kind of when mac the macrobiotic movement was fairly new in the West. And um, I have to fully admit that it, when you go back to some of the books that were written in the kind of 1970s and 80s, some of it was was uh, a little naive or a little theoretical and hadn't really been tried out. And so you have to be just a little bit careful of some of the things that that um, you know, appears in macrobiotic books at that time. Uh, I think now, in the last 40, 50 years, it's matured into a very good understanding. It's kind of broader, much, much more experience has led to you know, um, greater kind of understanding and, uh, and wisdom. So, salmon is a high stress food. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they would call that, why would they say that? It says whitefish, it says is okay. So, my guess would be, well, well, well two, two, two things. Um, 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 one of the kind of brilliant things that Mitchell and other people did was recognize that the energy in food, um, whatever the energy of a food is, when we eat it, we will tend to take on that energy. Um, so, if we eat grains, then we tend to develop you know, strong energy inside, but a lot of calmness and peacefulness. Uh, if we eat animals that run around, then it's going to give us much stronger running around energy. Um, and so with fish, if we eat uh, a very active fish, like a salmon, you know, it swims, uh, wild salmon, swims thousands of miles and then swims you know, all the way up the river, has a really a lot of energy. It'll give us a lot of energy. Um, um, if we eat a lot of it, then it may give us so much energy that we feel we start experiencing that as tension and stress. Um, so that's that's my guess as to what they meant by that. 
I think what I and most people would say these days is that actually if someone's um, ki or chi uh, body energy is low, then actually eating a more oily or a more active fish like a salmon could be helpful to really get more energy back in the body. Um, you know, if you eat a flat fish, flat fish spend a long time sitting on the bottom, um, um, just moving around a little bit, um, you won't get such an active energy from eating flat fish. Uh, a salmon probably has one of the strongest energies. Things like cod or haddock will still have quite an active energy. Um, when you see a whole cod or haddock, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty active fish. It's hunting other fish. Um, that's my guess. And so I think that's something which um, you don't need to take too much notice of. Also, the kind of white fish, fatty fish um, thing. Um, in the early days of macrobiotics, 1970s, 80s, um, there was a, a lot of new awareness of how uh, eating a lot of animal fats um, uh, was really contributing to heart disease and strokes and um, uh, gallstones and a lot of other health problems. Um, and so a lot of people were going from a typical American diet or Western diet, um, high, fat, high fat diet. I think at that time people were getting something like on average 40% of their energy from, from, from animal fat and hence very high rates of, of heart disease. And so it was felt that uh, for people to recover from those problems and improve their health, it was very good to go on a low-fat diet so the body would use up the fat inside the body. And one of the ways of doing this is if one was going to eat fish, to eat white fish rather than oily fish. Um, so I think that's good logic and, and that was effective. Um, but I think it's a different situation if people have, have long-term eaten a macrobiotic or a vegan or a near-vegan diet um, and really don't have a lot of fats uh, stored in the body. And then I think uh, eating some oily fish is, is, uh, is fine and, and a healthy thing to do and, and um, maybe even a desirable thing to do sometimes as a good source of, of healthy oils in the diet. As we now know, they're, they're high in omega-3s, um, and so it you know, can, can give a useful contribution to a healthy diet. Um, so, yeah, I hope that helps, uh, uh, Alex. Um, oh, there's a bit more to your question. Um, Mangoes are also described as a high stress food. For example, equally, perhaps being very yin. Yes, I guess that would be the would be the thinking. But I think they were using the word stress very, very loosely and um, a bit carelessly, really. Uh, I wouldn't. I would say mangoes, tropical fruits, then have quite a strong relaxing effect. Um, I mean, they 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 they're higher in in fruit sugars. So they might make you feel a bit more zippy, but my experience of eating tropical fruits like mangoes is that they have a very kind of calming, relaxing effect. Um, um, so, yeah, I don't quite understand that. And Amal, you've come back and you're asking about excess earwax. Uh, is that caused by uh, liver tension? Um, not so much. I think that's covered. That's that's. Excess earwax is really created when we're eating <coughs> too many mucus-forming foods, particularly oily, fatty, but also sugary foods, which, uh, if we're eating a lot of sugar, gets turned into fat and also gets turned into mucus, mucus that we might experience in our nose or sinuses or lungs. Um, and um, and uh, when we eat too much of that, those mucus forming foods, also that can create extra earwax. So it suggests good to really um, cut out dairy and eating excessively oily, uh, fatty and sugary foods. Uh, I think will help. Um, Alex, so you've come back. Salmon scraps and the fishmonger do seem to make my dogs higher, strong, more active. They are very oily offcuts too. Yes, um, yep, yep, I can understand that. Yeah, so <laughs> interesting to experiment on your dog. 
Interesting with horses, if you want horses to be more active, you give them oats, uh, which are also the most fatty grain. If they're overactive, then you may want to stop giving your horse oats because it can make them too frisky and too energetic. Um, so kind of a similar kind of thing from a, from a plant food. Um, okay, um, any other questions? We've been going, we've been going about an hour. Um, so um, thank you for your questions so far. Um, uh, I wonder if you have any other questions. Um, um, while I'm just waiting, I'll just say that um, we're still. Um, I'm still running um, some online courses um, while we're still in uh, lockdown or semi-lockdown mode. Um, what's today? Tuesday. So Thursday, I'm starting a new Six Steps to Health course. This is the most in-depth online course I run. Uh, six two-hour classes going through um, six different systems of the body, the, re the lungs and respiratory system, the heart and circulatory system, uh, the reproductive system, the liver, gallbladder, the digestive system, and uh, really understanding how we can really increase our health in these different areas and um, uh, keep ourselves well. Um, and also looking at what the kind of common health problems that can go wrong in those systems and what the causes are and what we can do to help those uh, help those problems including some recipes and the course also includes about 120 30 40 pages of course notes as well so if you if you're finding um, this uh, oriental medicine uh, really interesting and you'd like to learn more about how to look after your health then do have a look on our website at the uh, six six steps to well-being uh, of course Amal thank you can we have oats daily um, um, generally yes um, um, but if we're if we're um, if we're really trying to get rid of mucus in the body um, then maybe better not to have them daily also, it depends a bit on what form we eat them in, because rolled oats or porridge oats are, can be a little bit mucus forming. Um, very, ni very nice and less mucus forming are whole oats, sometimes called oat groats. They take longer to cook. You can cook them the night before when you're making your supper and then warm them up in the morning and cook them a little bit more. They are really delicious. Um, they can, you can really cook them until they really become creamy. But if you're trying to have a more cleansing effect on your health, then it's good to also make porridges from, from other grains. Uh, if you've got leftover rice, you can make soft rice, or you can make soft quinoa, soft millet. Um, um, so using these, these other grains um, as well. So Trudy um, saying thank you. So that's OK. I hope that's you know, been helpful. Uh, Dave, so you're back to the self-healing cookbook, I think. Sam mentioned, but not overemphasized. Eggs, red meat, poultry, and pork are described as high stress. The advice given is to avoid high stress food. Is if you are feel, feeling tense, low energy, moody, or susceptible to illness. Yeah, so that's how they're defining stress. So certainly, if you're feeling uh, a lot of tension, then eating, then and, and hot and bothered um, you, and then you may not want to eat salmon because that could increase that feeling you might not want to eat fish at all for a little bit or you may want to eat if you're going to eat fish uh, eat a flat fish or a white fish yeah so yeah that kind of makes that makes a bit more sense uh, Nikki you're asking about your reaction in the Sun you can feel very hot and depleted in energy quite quickly especially if I exercise in the heat. It leaves me feeling really tired and not well. Um, and you've also got a pale complexion. So, um, um, thank you, Kimberly. Um, so, um, thank you for your questions. And I guess you're off to have a rest now, which sounds good. Um, yeah, so Nikki, different, in Oriental Medicine, um, different, different weathers 
affect different organs. Um, so cold, if we're, in, if we're in a lot of cold, that can affect the kidneys. Um, uh, if we're in a lot of dry weather, that can particularly affect uh, the lungs. Um, or dry, well, the lungs like dryness, but they don't like a lot of dampness. And the organs which, which are most affected by heat are the heart and the circulation. So it suggests that you've got an imbalance in your heart and your circulation. Um, and the fact that when you exercise in the heat, when you're really, you know, your, your heart and your circulation is uh, particularly active, um, you know, it su suggests the same thing. And a pale complexion also suggests that there's something happening uh, with your circulation. Um, so it's all kind of pointing to the same thing, that you have a bit of an imbalance in your heart and, and circulation. Um, I'm just wondering um, kind of which imbalance it might be creating that. Um, it's a bit difficult to say because feeling very hot can happen for, for a kind of yin or yang reason. It can be... Um, it can be when there's too much heat in the body and that can be from a more yang or more yin condition but the fact that you also feel depleted um, uh, quickly suggests to me that your heart and circulation is lacking is depleted is lacking energy um, um, you've experienced some good increase in your energy it sounds like especially your kidney energy has increased this year which is great so maybe this is the next thing that's going to change. Um, and I'll just give you, because a, you know, a balanced um, macrobiotic diet is going to help. The, the category of foods that, that particularly helps strengthen uh, the heart and circulation are bitter foods, foods with a, with a, with a bitter taste, which we tend not to eat so much of. And we tend to go often for more sweet tastes and salty tastes and sometimes sour tastes, pungent hot tastes. Um, but the bitter taste helps that bring energy into the heart. When we eat something bitter, our mouth can kind of shrivel up. Um, so some useful bitter tastes are uh, greens. Um, um, uh, just leafy green vegetables. So having things like steam greens, uh, chopping them up finely, just steam them for a few minutes. Um, also roasted sesame seeds. Um, you just lightly roast them in a dry frying pan until they become golden. Um, they have a nice flavour, slightly bitter, so you could also mix those roasted sesame seeds through your, your, um, through your steam greens. Or you could fry the greens, um, which kind of increases that bitterness, and then mix in a pinch of salt and um, the roasted sesame seeds. Um, you could um, you can bite some bitter lettuce, um, some um, uh, rocket, uh, um, which are slightly hot but also bitter. Uh, mix a bit of dandelion greens into your salads. Um, also some bitter drinks. So actually coffee has a bitter taste, but it also has kind of caffeine and various expansive substances. So overall it's, it has a more expansive stimulating effect on the heart, but quite possibly particularly black coffee uh, is bitter and that could be part of the attraction of black coffee. And also uh, um, Dark chocolate has a bitter taste. Cocoa, if you ever tasted 100% chocolate, 100% cacao, it's it's strongly bitter, <laughs> and which is why sugar is always added to it uh, to make chocolate. Even if it's the healthy stuff, you know, the healthy, you know, 80, 85% uh, cacao chocolate, uh, the rest is sugar, which is not so great. So bitter drinks um, uh, made from roasted grains like uh, yano. Uh, barley cup, caro, um, also dandelion coffee made with just dried dandelion. Um, some dandelion coffees have lactose or milk sugar added to it, um, so don't don't use that. Um, just use pure dandelion coffee. Uh, you just you just simmer it up for a few minutes, and it's it's quite bitter. Can be very satisfying, 
see how you feel on that. You know, if you you might, if your heart energy is low, you may find you positively enjoy bitter tastes. Um, uh, so probably the thing you can eat most of are the greens, but just try these bit, you know, the bitter seeds, um, also roasted walnuts a, l a little bitter, um, um, uh, and then the, and then the bitter drinks. Um, so that would be that. I think that would be a good start. Uh, Alex, you're saying thank you. I do still love this book. I had forgotten I had it. Uh, taking it all with a small pinch of salt, and it's great how the book connects all, all in with emotional health. Yeah, a lot of people really like that book, um, 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 the self healing cookbook by Christi Christian Turner. Um, a lot of people really enjoy that as as a, as a good cooking book because it, there's a lot of good recipes and it's also bringing it, making a lot of good connections and uh, and bringing a, a lot of other knowledge in as well. Okay, so uh, I think that could be a good time to uh, finish. So I'll just say that um, I started a new online um, course, uh, our spiritual journey. On, on, I had to put it in on Tuesday evening. So these. Um, free question and answer sessions now are going to be at 8.40. I'm sorry if that's getting a bit late uh, for you, um, but it's the, it's the only time I could fit it in. Um, so uh, fantastic. Thank you for joining and thank you for your questions. And um, uh, yeah, it'd be great to, um, to hear from you next week and uh, have your questions again if you'd like to join. Okay, thank you very much everybody. I'm going to just check, no more questions, so, so let's end it there for this evening. Thank you.